It's a very interesting question. Uh, the question is as follows. May you explain how to control thoughts using the method of focusing on the self by Alamat al Rafabai. During the series on Risarat al Wilaya, you explain how to focus on an image of an object placed in front of us. But I would like to I would I, I would like you to kindly explain how to focus on the soul which you mentioned is harder. So Bismillah ar-Rahman. The first thing is, as much as possible, uh, try to control your uh, attention not to go to external things. Things come, whether we like them or not, they come, but we need to uh, make sure that we don't go after them. We cannot uh, stop them in the first place many times. Uh, at least directly maybe if we plan our life we can avoid them but uh, to begin with we cannot uh, stop them coming but we can make sure that we don't go after them and spend too much energy on them but then you need to channel your attention because attention is there yeah it's like for example water is coming from a spring river is flowing you cannot uh, stop it you have to channel it to something useful so bring your attention after remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards your nafs to know more your nafs and especially to think that your nafs is different from your body nafs is different from body I am different from body my real needs are not needs of body they are important but body is like for example I have a horse I have to feed my horse I cannot deny that I have a horse and I have to feed my horse I have to look after my horse I have to take my horse sometimes to, I don't know to a uh, wet but I am not the horse I am not the body body is not like a horse but uh, still is not me it's closer to me than an external mule but it's like a horse or like a mule for the soul uh, so lots of things can be done if we reflect on separation of our reality from body and then you would find that your reality is immaterial so by separating it from your body you can separate it also from dunya from this physical material world because we are not from this world um, we, we are not like wood and stone and soil yeah we are put in connection with this world through our body we are connected with soul but our reality is from higher realm so I have to free myself from body and then from this physical world and then see how I can release that imprisoned soul and bring it out, let it shine, and then feed it properly through tafakkur, through ma'rifa, through love, and try to invest more on exploring your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbahu. And then you go forward. But this needs also to involve assessment of what you have done during the day and how, for example, you got into wrong decisions or you know wrong behaviors, how to correct them, how to prevent bad things. So all these are in the moments of uh, self-contemplation and monitoring. And the more we uh, manage to uh, separate ourselves from body and from this physical world uh, the more uh, control of our thoughts we have then our thoughts instead of becoming bad thoughts become good thoughts so for example imagine 
uh, you are in the middle of buying something or selling something, then a spiritual thoughts come to your mind. Something of the hereafter come to your mind. Instead of being in Salat and something from dunya come, <laughs> you are in worldly interactions, but your soul is connected to the hereafter and brings good thoughts to you. Thank you, Shaykh Muhammad. May Allah bless you. Have a very invaluable roadmap. Uh, as a follow-up, is there, is there a way that you can help? So I mean, we, we all know how to look into ourselves and uh, understand uh, some of our emotions and some of our intentions. But when you say to focus on uh, the separation between the soul and the body, uh, how, how, how do we make sure that we're really doing that as opposed to kind of spoon feeding ourselves that our soul is different from our body or you know, almost brainwashing somebody might say are you trying to make yourself believe that you are separate from your body or are you experiencing the separation or the distinction between your soul and your body how do we what does it mean to focus on this is it something that just happens with silence is it just something that happens with uh, stillness how, how do you c can you say more maybe this is something that has to be experienced maybe it's hard to describe maybe this question is not the best question to ask but since you have uh, helped to understand maybe if you can help us bring this idea closer is this, is it, this must be experiential it, it's not rational uh, you would give the rational proofs in another place but this is experiential this is a so how would you do that so first we have to study nafs, so we have to undertake ma'rifatun nafs, self-knowledge, through philosophy, through ethics, through akhlaq, etc. But in these moments of reflection, it's not the time for learning. It's the time for trying to bring those ideas that you already know. Bring them to your attention and try to reflect on them and absorb them, grasp them. Yeah. For example, I know Allah is greater than any description. Allahu Akbar. But, and if I don't know this, I have to study, I have to ask, I have to read books. But then I need to keep reminding myself. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, verbally or not verbally, to think about this. So there must be moments that I remind myself, I uh, help my nafs to, uh, in Arabic we have a very good term, you know, uh, we say shu'ur, istash'ara, means you must really, uh, you know, sense this. Okay, so in these moments, it's not a moment for learning. Learning, we do it outside. It's a moment for reminding ourselves and reflecting so that it's settled. Because we have many things in mind, uh, stored. Some people, of course, maybe they haven't, you know, learned. But I mean, those who study, those take lessons, listen to lectures they have many things in the mind they are stored but they are not taken on board by nafs because nafs is very uh, slow in digestion yeah nafs takes time to digest things especially good things worries can quickly get in music can quickly get in but something solid, something useful, something that for long term can be helping us, takes time to digest. Listening once, twice is not in enough. This is why you see Quran is book of dhikr. How many times we have to read the Quran? Endless times. How many times we have to say uh, these zikrs? 
Salavat, Allahu Akbar, La ilahe illallah, Subhanallah. As much as we can. Allah, Zekran, Kathiran. Why? Because these are very heavy things. And nafs is not very quick in digesting these things. Because nafs has deep layers. And to make sure that these jewels, you know, go up to the lowest and, you know, deepest layers of nafs takes time. But if you manage to take them on board, then the good thing is that they don't easily also come out. <laughs> Inshallah, they remain for a long time. May Allah bless you, inshallah. We received one more question. Yes. Um, and the question is as follows. Um, is it a good idea for men and women from different backgrounds to stipulate certain rules in the marriage contract to create better understanding and common grounds for future life? Or would it be excessive, especially in modern conditions where there is no common single understanding of things. For example, for women to stipulate the level of their social engagements that they are used to, studies, maybe understanding of expectations on who is responsible for what, uh, and, and the level of engagement, household chores, etc. The type of place of residence, city or country, if for someone this is important, when is it reasonable to stipulate these things in the marriage contract and when is it, when is it excessive? I think uh, there are whole different things, you know, because things are different, their significance. But if something is really important for you, without which you think the quality of your life is compromised, without which you feel not be happy, then I think it's better to mention it's better not to take a risk. Even I think for the other party is better because we have to be honest for marriage. If this is something that is a matter of preference, a matter of convenience, you can raise it, but don't insist on it. Uh, not put it as a legal uh, Islamic condition, for example. But if it's something which is really important for you, you should mention it because then you may not be able to keep your calmness and you know feel you don't feel uh, happy then it can damage your life it can also be bad for the other person uh, so it de depends on how important they are for you and how much other good qualities you see in that person for example uh, maybe for you is very important to live with your parents in the same city uh, but the person has so many good qualities that uh, you know that it's not out of you know selfishness but because of some responsibility he has to be in another place but you know overall it's overweighs this problem of not being in your own city with parents for example so you have to measure to weigh things but if overall it's something that if you don't have it you feel very bad and you feel your life is miserable it's better to mention it and make it as a condition generally speaking thank you very much we, we asked a lot of uh, well, you know we say i am saying generally speaking because there are lots of factors for example you know yes. what is the age of this person how many chances of marriages are there? you know there are lots of things but generally speaking i think this is the way May Allah bless you. So, inshallah, we'll cover this much questions for today since we're Alhamdulillah. the end of the session. Uh, do we have time, inshallah, for greeting Shaykhna? Uh, inshallah, yes. Inshallah. Yes. Inshallah. So we didn't have 